really tight, they were pretty uncomfortable. We'll look at troubleshooting some of those first. So then you start looking into the more options later, you, you feel like you have a little bit more freedom, be a little bit more confident playing in half guard. You're not so worried about getting, getting crushed. So the first one we're going to look at, I'm going to lay down real quick. Right? Um, I've heard this called you a stop pull pass. Let me kind of spin a little bit. Um, because it's really frustrating to counter on the bottom. So a lot of times this, this position will come up. Um, if Mike's starting to put kind of like a shallow underhook in, he's not super deep yet. A lot of guys come over top of the shoulder. They turn into the legs here. They start walking this foot up. They start pushing this leg down. I'm, 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 I'm demonstrating it so you guys on top do it the right way. So the person on bottom will give you the right counter. Okay. So um, whenever, you, whenever you set this position, I'm here. I got, both, I got one hand on each side of Mike. He starts kind of putting a little bit of an underhook in. If it was a super deep underhook, we'd do something else. But right now, this is this is fine. Take the arm over his shoulder, hook underneath, hook underneath, nice and deep. I'm gonna take this hip. I'm gonna put it on the mat. I kind of shoot this knee under his leg. Here, turn my hips towards his leg. So my hips are facing his legs here. The benefit of this is it makes this underhook nice and shallow. If I'm playing in here, nice, that underhook is deep and he gets a lot of leverage. When I start turning away from it, now it's just the tip of his fingers hanging in there and it's not going to give him a lot of power. He can still be dangerous from here if he's an explosive guy, but generally this is a nice safe position. So from here, keeping this foot folded behind me like a kickstand so you can't roll me over. If I go like a pencil here, I'm going to get dumped So I keep my foot back. And then from here, I'm walking my foot up into his butt, using my elbow, using my hand to pry this down. The reason this position is frustrating is because there's not a whole lot of things for Mike to grab and attack, especially in Noki. Um, he has a whole lot of grips to go for. As soon as he starts getting really kind of dangerous with this hand, as soon as he starts kind of doing a lot with it, he runs the risk of me grabbing a Kimura real quick. Um, I got a lot of pressure on his shoulders, got a lot of pressure on his, I can start locking weight onto his face. It's pretty uncomfortable. So it tends to be a stall position. He's kind of just kind of hanging on to this for dear life, okay? So, the only thing that's ever worked for me in this position, is a stupid little, uh, stupid little trick. So Mike makes that switch, okay? So the first thing, I want to keep this arm safe. So it's generally best to kind of keep it in here, because that way he's not grabbing that wrist, he's not flying it out. If he starts really digging for that wrist, starts reaching back, I can start doing something like this. Most guys aren't going to give you that, and they kind of know pulling the elbows back is going to be dangerous. So they're just going to focus on pushing those legs down. So this particular triangle is pretty weak to hold on to. This feels stronger, but you're still just delaying the inevitable. He has a lot of leverage here, and there's not, not a whole lot for you to do. Um, and as soon as I start going like this, bridge into him, he's either going that way, or he's passed that in the leg out, this is, that leg's disappearing. Now I've seen some people have some success with kind of grabbing this foot down here, like this, and then from there they do a quick bridge and bridge him over. But the chances of me being able to get that foot are pretty slim, especially if he starts tipping back into me. Yeah, and then I stretch that arm out, now I definitely can get it, and I run the risk of having that arm in a super bad position when he tries to pass. So the only thing that's ever worked for me and I, I, I like to think I made this up, but there's probably some random Brazilians who've been doing it for years, and uh, so I can't really claim that. They're like, oh, Nino shepherd has been doing it for decades. <laughs> so I'm here. Instead of kind of hanging on here, hanging on here, Mike starts walking that foot up. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bottom leg, I'm going to curl it, and hook on this side of his foot, right like this. Then this foot is going to go here, to stop on top of my other foot. Okay? So I went from being triangle, Go on this side of his foot, I'm stomping on top of it. So I'm trying to get this foot instead of the near instead of the side between his legs, I'm trying to get the outside here. Pinching my legs together, pinching my knees together. What this does, it makes it hard for him to pull that foot out. So a lot of times he's looking for a crossing, I kind of delay the cross a little bit here. So I'm kind of just creating, creating a little bit of a hook. And it slows his leg down. It's also, he feels like he can pass, but he really can't just yet, because I've still got that, that, that foot hooked. Now saying that I'm not gonna hang out in this position. I go boom, hook this up. Now right away, I pinch my knees together. I'm gonna to rock my legs, try to slap my knees on the mat here, like this. Now Matt, see how he posted? I mean, Matt, Mike, see how Matt and Mike posted here? <laughs> see how Mike posted here? A lot of times, as soon as they post, they're gonna to start to back pedal to get their base back. And that's when I strip my hips. I go to my knee shield position. Okay, real quick, real quick movement. It's here, turn to walk that foot up. Keep this leg over top, curl this foot in, boom. Stop my foot on top of it, pinch my knee, swing my knees this way. As soon as he posts, starts pedaling back, I skate my hips and open up here and right my knee shield position that we covered last week. Hook, stop, pinch my knees, slap my knees on the mat. Come back here. It's a timing thing. As soon as you feel, as soon as you feel bike, your partner start to 
they slap, they start to pedal back. That pedal back is your moment to start shrimping. Because at that point, he's worried about recovering his position. He's not worried about passing. You gotta slap it, and as soon as he goes, trip your hips inside, knee shield. Okay? Call that the Kansas City Shuffle. You guys seen that movie? Yeah? What the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys.